Hey everybody, let's go ahead and make some healthy eggnog today. If you've ever had the traditional eggnog, it is so high in fat and sugar. What we're gonna do is make it in a much healthier way. Stay tuned to the end and check it out. Okay, chef, I'm super excited to see how your how our eggnog is gonna come out because I know we were having a little banter the other day of how we can make this eggnog healthier because what's in eggnog? Cream. Cream and eggs. And eggs. And, and alcohol. Sugar. Yeah. And sugar. Yeah. So how the heck do we make that healthier? So I think we came up with a really good compromise because um, Chef wanted to use a whole lot of eggs. And oh, I, <laughs> I was trying to make it as traditional as possible. He wants Let's... to make it taste good and I want to make it healthy. So we had to come up with a little compromise. A good, a good compromise. And you told me how many eggs were normally in this thing? Eight? Uh, eight. Yeah, eight. for this. So okay, so we knocked it down. To four. To four. Yeah. Okay, so and we have that. So so the, the eggs we're using are is going to be egg yolks as well. So that's going to be the main issue. I mean, we don't usually use yolks here we at all. We don't. Um, we don't. And not to say you can't ever use them, especially for something like this. It's kind of necessary because what you're trying to do is imitate like a French vanilla ice cream kind of base or like a creme anglaise base, in essence, of how we're kind of trying to kind of make this. And by adding the yolks, it adds that kind of extra richness and that depth that you're really looking for, whereas the whites wouldn't really contribute that at all. Right. So, so you explained that to me and I agreed, but we did come to the conclusion by experimenting a couple of times that if we just use four, it still tastes really good. So better is better. Better is better. Better is better. Correct. Progress is Correct. progress. Correct. And it still comes out great. And and, and we're going to try this at the end. I do have some already chilled that we can try out when okay, we're done here. I can't here. wait. No, we don't want to eat hot eggnog. No. Uh, so, and then the milk. So what we're using is this little skim milk, right? And this is our fat-free milk. We have four of these cups, which is going to equate to one quart of milk in this pot. Right now, coming coming up to like a steeping uh, temperature. Right. So it's it was just boiling. I lowered it down. Uh, I don't want it to be boiling when I add the egg in there. We have six eggs. Why did I bring two extra? In, in case, case one breaks. But go. wait, can I say something about the milk a little bit? Sure. Okay. So one thing I just wanted to mention about the milk is what do we need to be careful of when it comes to milk? Is the saturated fat in the milk? And normally, you you told me what traditional eggnog you use cream. Cream or half Four, and half. 467 calories a cup, 46 grams of fat, <laughs> per 20 cup. per cup. and Just the cream. Just the cream. And 29 of those grams of the 46 is saturated, which is saturating our arteries, clogging them up and all of these things. So we are completely replacing that with a fat-free milk, 90 calories per cup versus 467, zero grams shift. of fat. So yeah. yes, I know we're using the eggs, but I just wanted to share the fact that we're really, really cutting the saturated fat by using the fat-free milk and the taste is still gonna be amazing. Exactly, exactly. Wonderful. So let me show you here one little trick that I've, I've, I've learned that you can do with, with an egg like this here, is if you crack the egg and you're having trouble separating the yolk from the white, usually this is how most chefs are gonna do this, is crack it in half, usually take a shell like this and kind of feed it back and forth to each other and I'm getting just the yolk and I get a little shell in there. I can always pick that out, but I'm looking to get just the yolk here. Now you see the yolk actually cracked right there. And it's leaching onto there. You got some of the there. yolk in there. So yeah. it can be a little challenging, right? To yeah. do it like that. Now what some people might even do is take this, they'll crack it and they'll actually take this and crack the, the white and kind of let it just kind of, kind of come through their fingers like that. Ah. Or they'll catch the yolk in their hands like this. Again, we still have a little bit of that shell in there. We'll have to kind of fish that out. But you're kind of opening your fingers just a little bit to kind of get it out like this here is one way you can do it, right? Well, you want to try to get most of that white off because again, it won't really kind of give you that what you're looking for. And we still have the yolk kind of intact there, right? So now we they, have two what yolks. What if they do it that sell, you know, you get egg whites. Can you get egg yolks? Commercially, you certainly can, you yes. Can. Yeah, yeah. So let me show you another thing you can do. I've learned this, and this is actually, you know, more like a, it just takes more time to do it. Let me just do this over a separate bowl. Put this, crack the whole egg in here, right? Right. And watch this. Take a bottle. Oh, yeah. I know that trick. Oh, excuse me. I know that trick. Just slurp it on up. Yep. Slurp it up. But the trick, the problem is that sometimes if you don't do it fast enough, you then, oh, crack, goes, you, you then okay. crack the yolk. And now it's you, you can't really always get it out. So my personal preference is doing it through the fingers. So there's three different ways to do it. Yep, and, yep. you know, personally, I think going through your fingers is kind of your easiest way to do this uh, without making it um, But it's really yolk. fun with the water bottle. It it's is, a cool it, trick. It, I've seen, it, it. Cool I've seen it on Instagram. You do need like a wider m mouth to the to the water bottle, not to have the egg uh, break as, as, as the easily. The one I saw had like the 17 um, ounce, the, the bigger bottle. Correct. And that, yeah. and that seemed to work pretty well. Correct. 
but it's just for effect. I should have you doing this. No, I, doing I, this? I don't have the gloves on. You've got, you've got this, Chef. You've got this. I brought gloves for you, Kara. <laughs> So, um, you know, save these egg whites, right? Like you can bake these egg whites, use them as an egg white omelet. It's certainly not something We're you should just discard. put them in discard. our salad and our salad bar. Correct, correct, correct. We don't waste anything around here. Now, normally when we use eggs here, we usually don't crack a whole bunch of yolks to, and separate the whites. We just buy the pre, uh, uh, the pre-cartoned egg whites. Right, right. Um, and, and that's fine, right? But it's um, easy. That's correct. It. Yeah. So I have these. We can serve it, save that for something else. I'll move that over here. Our milk is. Um, <coughs> getting nice and warm here. Cool, so let's go ahead and do this. What we need to do is temper these eggs in here, right? And what that means is slowly letting the temperature come together that this is at and where this is at. If I just add this egg in there, it's going to scramble the eggs. Okay. 100% of the time. You so cannot do a, it like that. We need to be really careful. You have to temper it, right? Temper, temper. It. temper. Don't lose your temper here, Karen. All right. So take this here, grab that ladle for me. Yes, sir. And start slowly, slowly taking some of that milk and putting it into this bowl. Take a whole ladle for a ladle full of it. And slowly, just like slowly, 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 slowly. You have to slowly get that coming up, but not curdling it. Yeah, just drip it in there. And if you get a little skin like that, so you see it kind of develop. Yeah, on I the, see on the, the skin. The, that's yeah. fine. It's all going to come. Yeah, once the lid goes back over it, it'll be fine. You can go a little faster, a little bit faster. Just initially it has to be super slow and very gentle with it, or not, you're gonna create kernels in the egg and you don't have that smooth, creamy texture. What if you don't have two people? Well, you don't need two people. You I'm don't? Just gonna, I'm just, I just want your assistance here. All right, you can go a little faster. You can put the whole thing in here now. All right, cool, and give me one more scoop here. Okay, we'll a full-on scoop? Full-on scoop, but do it slowly, right? You can do it a little faster than you were doing, but don't just pour the whole thing in. And this is just, again, tempering the egg. So when I go ahead and put this egg back into the pot, it's gonna be able to be at a, the right temperature to where it doesn't just scramble and curdle when it goes back into there. If you bring this milk up to too high of a boil, that little skin there will get that. Get, get that. that off here. Got it. And what do we we'll have this discard, temperature we'll on? We'll discard that, that that skin that kind of developed on there. Uh, we have this on a medium temperature, medium right? Medium temperature, so when it's you're, not when boiling. You're, when you're, when you're, when you're taking milk up to a boil, you have to do it very slowly uh, with a lid on there, ideally, so that way you don't curdle. Uh, excuse me, or don't. Um, well, like you can actually curdle the skin milk, uh, but it also so that you're not um, burning the bottom. And that way it doesn't overflow on you either. I can do that. One of my first jobs was making hollandaise sauce at a restaurant. And you had to do this to make a whole bunch, big, big batch of it. We took a wet rag and made it right here like a little ring. Right. And you dropped the bowl in there. And oh, that so way it, it kind of, it sticks to it, right? Smart, smart. All right, so we'll do it one more time and add this in here. And I think it should be all right. Start going back into the other pot. You look like you want to help here. Right? You're a well, grabber. I feel like useless here. So I'm trying to be of service. All right, all right. We can get you to do this. Here, slowly whisk this in here, and I'll pour it in here. So you only take some of the milk out, not all of the milk out. You don't need to take out. it all out. I mean, you, you can, essentially, but you don't have to. So again, do not bring this up to a boil. You will definitely scramble the egg slowly. You're, you're looking to hit like 160 degrees. And what I'm feeling for is for it just to get a little thicker. It's and that's going to happen. That's going to be frothy, right? That's going to happen just from the egg because we're whisking it so much. But as it cools down, that's all that froth will kind of dissipate. To give this a little bit more flavor, let's add a little dash of cinnamon into here. Cinnamon, by the way, great for regulating blood sugars. Um, gives you a sense of sweet without adding any processed sugar to it. So. The more cinnamon, the merrier, in my opinion. If you were talking to James, our server here, he would probably put a whole pound of cinnamon in this thing, like, you know. And look, you can go ahead and experiment more than just cinnamon. And Little nutmeg. Nutmeg. You can put allspice, ginger, clove, you know, go crazy with it, right? I, I, mean, think, it's, I think it's a great idea because the more of these flavors that we're adding, um, it, we don't feel the need for the sugar piece. Correct. And why don't we want sugar, chef, in our food? What does it do to our bodies? I'm sure you can tell me, Kara. I don't want to get. I don't want to step. You don't on your want to toes step here. on my toes here. Well, the sugar, <laughs> I mean, I the sugar, <laughs> uh, pokes our bear, our pancreas, makes us create too much insulin. Insulin's a growth hormone, makes us hungry, right? Sugar also can create some inflammation in the body, so it affects our heart, it affects our brain. Um, it also is empty calories, no nutritional value whatsoever. So we're not getting any bang for our buck. And I'll rot your teeth, so all around. Yeah, not good for the teeth. <laughs> my I think I must have had a lot of sugar when I was a kid because I got a couple fillings. Oh, yeah. I, I assure you I had my a couple fillings. My arm's getting tired, Chef. Ooh. Okay, so now 
We're using this product. We're using Swerve, which is, um, is a sugar alcohol, right? So no calories, great for cooking, and doesn't poke the bear yeah. like regular sugar would and doesn't contribute any calorie whatsoever, but adds a really nice sense of sweet. I think I really like this product. You know, I've, we've used Splenda here over the years, Truvia. This Swerve product is a no calorie sweetener, I think works the best because you have three different ways to they, they sell this. This one being the brown sugar option here. And um, if you want to use a powdered sugar option, which they also make, and they also make a granulated sugar option, but they're all made from the same ingredients, uh, which it's a no calorie sweetener. And the main ingredient here I'm is sure. erythritol. Yeah, She's which is a sugar alcohol. And the only thing I would say about sugar alcohols to be careful of, um, if somebody has a lot of gut issues or, um, you know, irritable bowel or something. If you have too much sugar alcohol, it could disrupt it a bit. But um, if you don't, it's a it's a great sugar replacement, and I believe it's a one to one ratio. Is that correct? This use one same, is. Yeah. Yes. This is great. Which makes it super easy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can use this in place of using brown sugar uh, for all different types of things. So what I'm looking for here is for this to get a little thicker. The steam's starting to come back off of it, so it's getting hot. Uh, but I don't want it to get too hot, right? You will definitely curl that egg if this comes up too hot. But what you're looking for is the kind of coating that spoon, right? When I put my, my, my spoon in there and I go like this, I can see a little bit of that kind of, you know, that thickness. It's not there just yet. So Still it's, it's, it's getting there though. So you the more we heat it, right? The, the more it gets hot, it's gonna get thicker as well. But if it gets too hot, you will, you will curdle the egg and then you basically have a funky so scrambled egg. We always eggs. have to have you around when we're making the eggnog because <laughs> I don't know, I might, be, I might be curdling the egg. If you're spiking the eggnog, do it after <laughs> it cools down as well, Oh, that's right? the I big mean, question. This, this is um, virgin, non-alcoholic. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not putting alcohol in it. Okay, but if you were to put alcohol, you I mean, would you can put go it crazy, at the end. Right? Yeah, you can put any sort of rum in there. Traditionally, they might even put like, like a Captain Morgan spiced rum or whatever you want to put. You know, ideally, I don't like to put alcohol in my eggnog because I, I think having it dairy, it. I think having dairy with alcohol just kind of makes it a little you know, my stomach a little sour <laughs> personally, but I mean, um, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever floats your boat, right. uh, just don't go crazy with it. So let that slowly heat up and then we'll cool it down and then our eggnog is, is ready to go. I do have some in here already cooled down. Uh, and what we'll do here is we'll show you what it looks like you know, when it comes out and you actually have this, just another couple more minutes and this will be done. But do let's pour this in here. We'll show you a proper serving size, right? We are using yolks. Of course, we have there, a really so cute glass. We're not going to pour. Presentation is everything, right, Chef? We try here. You see how nice and thick that is, and we didn't use any cream. That's right. Let's take a cinnamon stick here, Kara, and we'll give a little garnish All to this. All right. So a little straw. Sounds like a great idea. So. And these are little four ounce glasses, so we're only filling it essentially about, about two, two ounces. ounces. Yeah. Correct. This is just about there. Like I said, we can let this go another minute or two, and then we'll pull it off. What I like to do is just put it in these little disposable containers or put it in whatever sort of container that's not gonna keep the heat going, right? Like let just it cool. Get it, let it get cooled down and then get it in the fridge. Don't put it in the fridge too cool down. You will really mess the refrigerator up, right? Let, let it cool to room temperature and then pop it in the refrigerator. If not, you'll mess your refrigerator up pretty quickly. Put it on defrost mode when it's not supposed to be. And Yeah, that's really, and, and, and generally speaking, whenever, I know this is off topic a little bit, but when you are cooking food, you always want to get it to that room temperature before you stick it in the refrigerator. It's yes, really, really correct, important. Correct. And I see that a lot um, with people is that they take the food and they cover it and it creates all that steam inside and they stick it right in the refrigerator. Not the ideal thing to do. You know, always for me, I always try to spread the surface area out. That way you're able to cool the temperature Quicker. faster. Yeah. Drop it to room temperature within the first 60 to 90 minutes is the ideal thing to do. That way it gets in the refrigerator before and gets cooled down. Before the bacteria. Yeah. So grows. 40 to 140 is the temperature danger zone. So you want yeah. to kind of keep your food out of that zone you know under under 40 or above 140 so that way bacteria uh Safe. really can't can't, can't grow yeah. there where's your cinnamon stick at it's it's falling we need longer and it can't we need get longer up. cinnamon sticks <laughs> i can still see it though it's poking out oh you got two all right i'll give you another one here mm -hmm. it's only fair and you could have also just put cinnamon sticks in here while this is steeping right like you don't have to put actual cinnamon if you're not looking to put too much and just put a little hint of it the cinnamon stick does a good job of that give you a little kind of flavor without more overwhelming flavor. it we're just going for flair not flavor cheers cheers it's That's really amazing so you can still make healthy eggnog and still make it taste good happy holidays. healthier have a great holiday folks if you like this video and you want to see another cooking demonstration click here if you want to listen to our podcast click here mm -hmm.